Well, now we'll move on to the wave equation. I think my favorite of the three. I can't say that. I love them all. And this, of course, is about the rush to the equilibrium and then overshooting it. So it's about periodic motion. It's the generalization of the harmonic operator, things going back and forth. This is life. This is conservation of energy. This is Newton's second law. This is all of beautiful dynamics. So this is the equation. And so we repeated some of the same steps we did for the heat equation, separation of variables, which gave us once again the eigenfunctions of the Laplace operator on the segment from zero to one. But we ended up with a second order ordinary differential equation in time. And so we had two constants, a sub n and b sub n. That's interesting. That's a difference from the heat equation. Two undetermined constants. Then we even looked at a different form where these are factored out into amplitude and phase. But for this exercise, let's stick to this form. And so now we're kind of thinking of a guitar string that is pulled and let go, that's plucked. And you might wonder, well, we're kind of going to start doing the same thing, but you know that we're one equation short. And of course we are, we should be. So you'll see that in a moment. So at time t equals zero, we're just left with this essentially Fourier series that should match the initial condition equals x times 1 minus x. It should match the initial condition. And just like here, actually I believe it's the problem is identical. It is, of course. We will get the same coefficients for a sub n's that we got here for c sub n's. Here we go. So that will give us a sub n's. But what about b sub n's? Well, this is where you remember that this is an equation that describes dynamic evolution. It's Newton's law. And with Newton's law, the Newton Newtonian paradigm is that you indicate the initial location, but also the initial velocity. So when I said you pull on the guitar string and let it go, well, maybe that's the case where the initial velocity is zero. But if you strum, then at the moment you let go, the string is moving already if you strum quickly. So there is an initial velocity. Of course, we're missing one initial condition. Whereas the heat equation, you only need one because you start with some heat distribution and then it relaxes to equilibrium. There is no inertia. There is no momentum. This is a much more lively equation. It's a dynamic equation. Some people use the term quasi-static. It's quasi-static means at every moment it's really not moving anywhere, kind of. Moving slowly somewhere, but it goes, whatever, quasi-static. move, no inertia. But here it's all about inertia. And when, there's, and when there's inertia, there is acceleration. And when there's acceleration, there's second order derivatives in time. And when there's that, you need two boundary conditions. So of course you also need a velocity. What is velocity? Velocity is just the derivative with respect to time of u. So that's the sort of conditions that the wave equation comes with. And you need to specify it at the initial moment. So you not only have to say where the string is, but how fast it's moving. Okay, what function should we choose? I don't know. Uh, let's choose, uh, do we feel like evaluating more integrals? Yeah, I think we kind of do. So it will be, how about I just square this, hey? Why not? Just to make it different. Or should just, I could just make it x squared, what would that do? That's a weird initial velocity, isn't it? But I just want to have something different. I could make it minus sine of pi x, but that would be a boring Fourier series. All right, we're going to use Wolfram Alpha again. Okay, but we need to do a little bit of work because we need to see what the derivative will be 
at time t equals zero, the expression for the derivative. So we know what to plug it in to. Okay, so let's do two steps at the same time. Let's evaluate the derivative. But then also let's evaluate it at zero. So find the expression and then also evaluate it at zero. And so the derivative with respect to time only come from these terms. That's the only place where time appears. And this cosine will become sine. So zero. So we'll just be left with b sub n's. So it'll be the sum. And then cosine of this, which we, when we plug in zero will be one. So that's good. So there's nothing left to do there. That's just one times sine n pi x. And there we go. Pretty much the same series. Except I will now give this combination a name to make Alex's life a little bit easier. We will call this d sub n. Alex will tell me what d sub n is and we'll get b sub n from it by dividing by this. Okay, let's write down what d sub n is. It will be this coefficient of 1, what is it, 1 over length over 2, twice, because of the same argument as before, we're going to find the symmetric, the, I guess anti-symmetric odd uh, repetition of this function will go from minus 1 to 1, and of course here it will be this, but on the other side it will be x times 1 plus x squared, that's how I would describe the symmetric form algebraically. I would have to integrate it from minus 1 to 1, which will be twice the integral from 0 to 1 of this thing. Okay, before Alex tells us the answer, what's the rate of decay of the coefficients? Oh, I don't know. What does this function look like? It looks like this. So I think, I think n to the fifth and is that true? 1 over n to the fifth? Okay. All right. So we'll go with, I'll just go straight for b sub n, which will be 1 over c pi squared in n squared, 1 over c pi squared n squared times, and you're about to tell me what d sub n is. It's not so bad. So, we did Laplace's equation, the heat equation, now we've done the wave equation, which means that we're done with fundamental PDEs in one dimension. So starting next lecture, we will talk about PDEs on more complicated, it's not the right word, more interesting two-dimensional domains.